to the Squadcast, where we're going to get into a discussion because the other thing that people couldn't stop talking about was season three, <laughs> Call of Duty Warzone, uh, the big update. Steve, you played, I played. Mm -hmm. uh, did anyone else play season three, Malik? I haven't Kibis? had the opportunity I yet. I tried, I redownloaded Warzone. Um, but the way that it works on PC, I'm not sure if you guys, well, I'm not sure what you guys play on, but you have to be like in the game, in the launcher in order for it to update. Yeah. So yeah. I had to wait overnight for it to, oh. it's Warzone on PC is an interesting experience, but I did get to play <laughs> one round. Uh, okay. I did get to play one round. All right. Yeah. So Steve, tell us what's uh, up with season three and the update, your thoughts, and then we could ask, you know, Malik and myself and Steve or Caboose, if you'll try it, we'll get into that discussion. Yeah. Absolutely. So I guess I guess the starting point is the the kind of event itself, uh, Activision and um, Ravensoft and Infinity War, all of them, they they kind of split it up into two days, uh, hyping it up as like the destruction of Verdant, something that, you know, all players have been kind of wanting for X amount of months at this point. Like there's been this event that's been, you know, building up and a nuke, right? A nuke yeah. event, yeah. right? And then that's what happened on the first day was that we finally got to see zombies overtake the map and um, unleash a nuke, destroying the map. And then the second day was when we got to see like some of the backstory, which incorporated Rebirth Island. Um, mm. Players got to see like the nuke launching and all that. And then surprisingly, at the end of that event, you know, you got to play, it's dropped straight into the new Verdansk 84 map, um, which I've seen some people be like, oh, this is just kind of underwhelming because, yeah. They've updated the map in various ways to add new points of interest, including like just to go over them. Summit is a replacement for Dam. Salt Mine is a remodeled and altered version of the quarry area. Array is a brand new area, um, which has like a whole bunch of like scaffolding, which is really cool. They kind of um, moved down it. lumber and like farmland. They kind of rearranged as well. Yeah. The and then you also have like factory, which is right up close and adjacent to Superstore and then Stadium is just in like its first uh, stages of like construction. So there are huge changes to the map itself, but also like smaller changes, just the way that even if you look at the the water canal that runs down through from old, previously dam all the way to port, now there's trees and bushes in there to, to kind of give you cover when you're crossing. Uh, it all adds up to, in my opinion, a really great map change. Uh, I know some yeah. people were kind of disappointed that we didn't get a brand new map but I, to be honest, I love Verdansk. I think that was a like an awesome map to begin with. Yeah. So not necessarily changing it top to bottom wasn't a wasn't an issue for me. Yeah, I agree with you. I feel like sometimes, especially when you're looking at a game that has so many users, kind of yeah. out, I won the battle royale battle. I would say. I would, um, I would agree. Um, it's a lot to put on the table to redo entirely Verdansk and change up the map. I feel like fans might have been more angry if they completely redone the map and like it wasn't just a skin over. Um, yeah, so yeah. I do like that they just did the they changed up um, some of the elements. It's a lot greener <laughs> it's brighter i um, love the color change the color palettes it, it's greener i have issues with the filter because it kind of gives you that um nom like if you're watching like a 90s war movie of vietnam sure. it gives you that grittiness that's more saturated that's so it kind of looks like a bit like it just looks dull a, a bit to me um mm. but i do like the m more greenery that you have and how more wide open the map is there's a lot less places to hide um a lot yes. less places snipers could camp yeah what something that i'm trying to figure out where i'm gonna camp now oh yeah the, yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, the map itself like completely changes the dynamic of it even just thinking through your your own team strategy of like where you're gonna go positioning and all that the smallest changes of how a, a little building can be under construction now or um I, I always go back to like that huge skyscraper in downtown. Now it's like leveled off halfway because yeah. it's still under construction. It, it, it completely changes that area and the dynamics of it. Um, but in addition, Camille, you kind of already talked about it, but like the meta has been changed as well. Like they finally, you know, nerf the the aug and the skykov pistols which is awesome they're they're listening oh, to yeah, the those pistols were pretty ridiculous i remember yeah. seeing oh yeah, yeah. like the yeah. pistols they they were they were silly uh and the rose skin i mean 
the difference in the lighting just completely nerfs the rose skin so people can't just hide in corners and and kill all unsuspecting players that they're crossing so yeah. yeah the current meta is a lot more open so you can actually play around with the the different loadouts and the guns themselves and not have to rely mm. on just what works and you, there's a lot more viability in in terms of the different guns um mm -hmm. so so far i mean we're we're not even a weekend, but I'm already having a lot of fun with these changes. Yeah, and I do, nice. there's more cold, well, you could only get Cold War guns, really, <laughs> um, if you're just picking up guns um, throughout the map, which yeah. I think some people who got into Warzone because of Modern Warfare are having issues with, but I feel mm -hmm. like that's a small adjustment because you're still able to use your loadout. Um, yeah. you, you just, you know, as you're building up to kind of buy your loadout, you, you just got to pick up some cold war guns. And I think I this like is same wasn't, here. But wasn't as well, wasn't it always kind of like that? Even in, even when it was like a modern warfare thing, didn't they, didn't they update the game often to like the floor loot would be different? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Usually, but, like, I guess just, half season they, they do like a big update of like, yeah. So I them. guess right now it's just like, it's just pure cold, cold war, war stuff. Maybe, cold maybe war there guns. will be another update yeah. where floor loot ends up being modern warfare guns again and and that's the yeah. thing you bring up a good point like i feel like that would make sense for them to do playing into the event of this destruction of verdansk and you know the hunt for adler um taking yeah. place at this time it makes sense that you're going to mostly see cold war guns because they're playing yeah. off of an event there could yeah. possibly be an update um in the future but i feel like with a lot of these you know games that are ongoing the mm -hmm. fan base like you know steve and i we play Warzone quite frequently call of duty yeah. a lot right we could be very protective <laughs> over Absolutely. our franchises um so you know i i try to give it some time like i didn't want to give any thoughts I, before i got like a lot of games like i've been playing consistently um multiple Multiple games every night um mm -hmm. and I, I, overall it's it's not bad i feel like if you went into this update thinking it's going to be a complete change you are going to be disappointed um I think that's fair right but if you kind of just go into Warzone, not expecting much maybe not even aware of the update you're gonna be like oh this is cool this is all right yeah. Or on the flip side, I mean, if you are like a Fairway fan and haven't played in many, many months and you're just jumping in now, yeah. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how different the map is and I how, I was. how new and fresh. Yeah, exactly. Like you, Malik, like jumping in and being like, OK, now ground loot's different. These locations are different. The way the game plays feels a little different. And I think that's something that, you know, welcomes new players into the fold. Yeah. And I love what they're sorry, Malik, go ahead. No, I was just going to say it really uh, it made I really don't like old school shooter games. Uh, <laughs> I don't like going back to older generations. There's only so many times and like this. They, I just don't like those guns. But with this new map and the new loot drops, it's almost extra incentive to get your loadout drop. Yeah. There is like you want those those modern high power weapons that have all your perks and all your attachments and everything. And I like that a lot because it creates more tension, you know, when you're when you're ordering those loadouts because people uh, there's a lot more people doing that. I kept getting sniped over and over <laughs> and over. I couldn't get a single loadout drop. It was a nightmare. But one thing I will say is the UI is starting to get really cluttered. Mm. Um, as like a new player going mm. back in, there's all these different tabs, all these different things where it's like, this is new, this is new. Yeah, like, like the Hunt for different. Adler, it's a new tab that opens oh, up. Then yeah. you have your playlist, yeah. which um, is actually a very interesting point. I wanted to talk about this. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I'll bring it up after I ask you guys just your opinion on, on the new Gulag. What did you guys think of the other portion of the gulag that's now open because it's more of an l shape than it was so, kind of the straightaway before so it's clear it's inspired directly from the black uh black ops 2 uh standoff map which initially i was like this Ooh. is really cool i love this map i don't like this gulag app. really i love this gulag i have not lost once really yeah wow. I think it's too open it has too many levels to it like the house that has like the mm. second floor to it the ramp that goes up I think it's too big, personally. See, I think a lot of people, see, I think why I'm winning right now in the Gulag, a lot of people are still trying to get used to yeah. that Gulag. So they're running around like crazy. And all I do is just where I spawn, I hide behind a crate. 
and I listen for the footsteps and then I just come out and shoot, right? Or I wait for the flag to um, spawn and then when they go, I just shoot. Um, But I guess now I just gave away my secret, so I'll probably die more in the gulag. So that's great. We'll edit it out. (laughs) Just edit it out. Done for now, Camille. Yeah, Yeah, edit it out. You know, everyone tuning in, keep this between you and us. This is just a secret, secret. secret. Uh, I'm looking at it now, honestly, like for me, I still think the first, like the original Gulag is undefeated. Yeah. I, I, I like that there's just there's just enough cover. It's small enough. I don't yeah. like there to be any verticality mm. in the Gulag. Exactly. You know? I think that that, uh, that could be a little weird. That could be a little tricky. Um, but I understand as well that like they got to change things up. Yeah. You know, like it, things have to become fresh and new and different, even in the sense that they change the guns that you get in the Gulag. Yes. Um, I think that that's fine. Like it's always got to be different. It's always got to be something new so then you're like you can't go into the game three months on end where it just doesn't feel not even one bit different Mm -hmm. than it did three months ago you know well um yeah go ahead the old gulag for me was like this this 30 seconds injection of adrenaline where you (laughs) yeah it's you and this other person in this small area you had to like fake behind the showers it was just like if you lose, you just you kind of still have that adrenaline going into your next yeah. game. But if yeah. you win, you're like, all right, I got this. Let's go. Like, yeah, it, it really had like that exciting feeling. I feel like the new Gulag just kind of drags that experience out a little bit too much. I, I want fair. that like clean one on one interaction, you know, to get me pumps to either get back into the match with my friends or, you know, to start over and, and drop into a new match. Yeah. I think it also is just, again, going back to how big it is. And talking about like your adrenaline rush, once that uh, countdown hits zero, it's not that immediate sense of just running. Urgency. Yeah. yeah. The urgency just isn't there. Now it's like, okay, I'm just going to hide. Listen for footsteps. <laughs> and I'm not calling you out, yeah. Camille. I think that's no, a very no, viable but you're strategy. Right. You're absolutely right, right? You but lose that not urgency. Just go yeah. forward, hit them with all you got, and just hope for the best. Now it's like, okay, yeah. I'm going to be sneaky. I'm going to go climb yeah. up this thing or hide behind this thing. Well, and especially how they've done the gulag, right? How they created the gulag was you have all the fighters waiting at the top. They're watching it. You fight. It's kind of like, yeah. you know, movies when you do like fight underground fight scenes mm-hmm. and there's a yeah. cage match and you can't get out. You just have to fight and everyone's watching. That's the feeling that the old Gulag got. But because now there's all these crevices and different levels that you could hide, you don't you don't get that level of excitement or urgency like you guys were talking about. Um, one last thing before we move on to xCloud, yeah. which I feel like we have to talk about. Obviously, the rollout of events like these is super important with just how smooth or um, they do roll out and how clear the communication is for fans of franchises. Fortnite obviously perfected this uh, just because they've Mm. done it so many times. Steve, how did you feel about the rollout of season three? Because there were a lot of hiccups and issues um in terms of people not being able to get in to see the event yeah it was it was pretty rough on both days arguably um people were just hit with server issues they were lined up in the queue and the queue it seemed like queues the queue didn't even matter because people found a way around it by just exiting out of their game and coming back in until the queue wasn't there it was like a a glitch probably i I don't really know what was going on so I, I do feel like there has been communication. I'm going to go back to Outriders. Uh, they had great communication when they first launched and their servers were kind of buggy and they were constantly, like every 15 minutes, just being like, we're looking into this and everything. But yeah, I, I wish Raven Software had a bit more communication going on, especially because these events were only three hours long. Yeah. So if you were getting frustrated and you said, okay, I give up, I'm, go- I'm walking away, you, you, you missed see out on happened. the event and you missed out on like if you unlocked um calling cards as well yeah right yeah, um, if you're really into that and yeah. i i think just in what is the right time for an event to happen like steve mentioned oh, this event yeah. they had multiple events over the course of two days that lasted mm. for like three hours mm-hmm. um so you would go in you would see the playlists um destruction of Verdansk part one that's available yeah. for three hours yeah at because three o'clock of, EST is when we had access to it. Yeah, and people were not able to get in. And I thought because people weren't unable to get in for such a long period of time, there were issues. They said that they they acknowledged that there were issues on their Twitter, Activision did. Um, mm-hmm. I just thought that playlist would still be available <laughs> for yeah. people after three, but it wasn't. So do you think it's 
it's wise in the future to have events that are very limited like this? Yes, because they need to compete with Fortnite and, they, mm. and they're starting to. They mm. really are. Call of Duty, Warzone especially, is getting to the point where if they make some smart moves and some smart changes, even like they did with that trailer where they had all the celebrities and personalities, yeah. 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 they, they awesome. have the opportunity to really kind of fill this void as Fortnite does start to dwindle out because their numbers are slowly declining. Mm. It's one of those things where it's been a consistent decline. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I like that they are doing events, even though people had issues. I, I like that they're doing this uh, and kind of creating a narrative around their world because as a fan who has been disconnected from it for probably four or five months i i'm starting to come back and actually get interested in what's going on it's not just oh, i'm gonna hop in and play some some wars on really quick it's like oh what's going on here like there, there's some new story stuff there's mm -hmm. like these events happening it gets you back involved and that's a really good way for them to engage their uh you know their kind of inactive players yeah, mm -hmm. I want them to keep this up. I want them to keep this momentum going with like in-game events, getting people engaged like this. They just got to work on the servers. And yeah. I know that's not easy to just say and flick a button and, and fix that kind of issue. But I think this is a lesson well learned that they can, you know, kind of move forward and kind of yeah. new, new way, new strategies of approaching this. Yeah. I agree as well. I mean, I, yeah, go ahead. There's always, there's always going to be those server issues. I know it's something that people want to be avoided. And, and I understand the frustration in wanting to get in, even when there's like, even though it's three hours, like again, it's a limited amount of time. Who knows? You may not even have the ability to play for longer than an hour. So you yeah. want to like jump in and try it out. And so if you're having server issues, I understand it's frustrating, but like it also can be a bit seen as a bit of a good sign that yeah, Warzone is big. Mm -hmm. and, and and it is competing with Fortnite. Yeah. They are they are a couple of licensed skins away from competing full on head to head well, with Fortnite. Well, they just need the right licenses. They already have yeah. Saw, they have like Leatherface, Leather all yeah, these different but like, skins, but they just they just need those right licenses. They need Kratos. Oh, <laughs> please. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, that could work. <laughs> I could. Yeah, but I agree. I feel like this is great. You know, they really haven't done a live event on this scale. This is mm. really the first one they've done. So there is bound to be hiccups. Um, and it's unfortunate that some people did miss out. Um, however, I feel like, yeah, this is the right move. This, this is what they have to do to kind of keep up. They could start yeah. having concerts. Oh God, no, no, don't do concerts. <laughs> don't do concerts, but and they I probably will. Did they stream this at all? Their event or no? I think so. I think they, they stayed up from their first uh, official. I was too busy trying to get in, in to yeah. tell you the truth, so I have no idea at all. I also just want to quickly point out, like we are dealing with an industry that is working remotely. I, yeah. And yes. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend to know how much that puts a constraint on the, on a development studio of this size. So yeah, let's let's let them get back to normal. Give them a little slack. We, yeah. Yeah. Agreed.